Hello, and welcome to Dining for a Difference at Home. I'm Monica Kaufman Pearson, and I'll be your host for this unprecedented evening for Families First and for all of you who are joining us in our virtual ballroom for the next hour. Tonight, you will hear stories of inspiration and hope and the difference you are making for families on their tough road to resiliency, especially during this challenging time. Now, it's not too late to bid on our silent auction, which will end at 7.50 tonight. Just below me, you will see the link to our silent auction where you can bid on a luxurious week for the entire family at the Four Seasons Resort Residence Club in San Diego or Scottsdale, Arizona. A private wine tasting for 20. An Atlanta United package. Go soccer! The chance to try something new with dance lessons, and then we have more fun adventures. Later tonight, we hope you will join us in raising a paddle to support the critical work of Families First. All you need to do is send a text, DFAD2010, to the number 44321. Again, DFAD2020 to the number 44321, and you will be prompted with instructions to give. Now, you can also make a donation online just below or give via the telephone. Our helpline is 404-853-2810, 404-853-2810, and we have an operator ready to help you. Now, tonight, we're especially grateful to our honorary chairs, Tony and Jackie Montag. They represent just one of the three generations of the Montag family who have devoted their time, gifts, and leadership to Families First. We will hear a little bit more about the Montags later tonight, but I just want to say how honored I am to be able to share their story. We also extend our thanks to our incredible host committee. These individuals and families gave selflessly of their time to help make this year's Dining for a Difference a huge success. Ellen and Jack Holland, Philip and Laura Law, Erica and John Montag, Doretta Rhodes, and Reese Sutherland. For your leadership, your thoughtfulness, and your support, we say thank you. And of course, none of this would be possible without our generous sponsors. Thank you, Chick-fil-A, for your presenting sponsorship, and Cox Enterprises for championing tonight's cause. Thank you, Jim and Ibby Mills, and Epic Insurance Brokers and Consultants. We also want to thank our advocates and defenders for making tonight possible. Please join me in thanking these and other generous sponsors who have invested in Families First. Now, while you are getting settled in, let me tell you a little story about my relationship with Families First. And Families First is now celebrating 130 years of service to children and families. I've been involved with Families First for 40 years. My daughter was adopted through Families First. And then I became a member of the board and there's something else I did with Families First that you'll learn about from the CEO of Families First, Dupree Swati. Blessings to all of our families joining us this evening. And thank you, Monica, for sharing your journey with Families First. Monica was the driving force behind changing our name from Child Service and Family Counseling Center to Families First back in 1987. We thank you, Monica, for your vision, and we continue to feel your impact on this organization and your longtime support of our families. And thank you to everyone who stuck with us as we had to cancel our gala in March and navigated your way back to joining us tonight. It's a first for all of us, and we are grateful for you taking the next hour to meet our phenomenal board of directors and learn about the critical work our dedicated staff at Families First is doing to make sure we're thriving over the next 130 years. I'd like to thank the Montag family. We're proud to honor their legacy tonight. Tony and Jackie are great friends and champions of ours, along with their children and their families, whom we love dearly. Let me take this time to also thank Chick-fil-A, Cox Enterprises, and all of our great sponsors, along with those of you who bought seats at this virtual table tonight. You have supported us generously 
And I also want to thank in advance those who will be supporting our raise a paddle tonight to support the work we do. You make everything we're doing for our children and families possible, and we're doing a lot. Before this pandemic hit Atlanta and the world, we launched a strategic planning process with our board, our leadership, inclusive of our community and our staff to take a hard look at how we can do even more to support families here on the west side and throughout Georgia. Later this year, we'll be sharing a bold new direction outlining how we'll be supporting families through recovery, making them even more resilient, and then in order for the generations of their children following them to reap healthy, rich, productive lives. As you are aware, job loss, isolation, and mental anxiety are at an all-time high, so the need for Families First is greater than ever. Our families depend on us now, more than ever in our 130-year history. And without Families First, those tough barriers to resiliency that our families struggle to break through may never be broken. We are partnering with the West Side Future Fund, and we're working with some phenomenal leaders on the West Side. Although we're filming tonight from our family's first headquarters here on the West Side, our staff has been working remotely for the past two months throughout Georgia. Now on with our show. Tonight, you're in for a big treat. You will hear from Ebony Williams and her four children who were homeless just over a year ago, but after finding families first, have shattered barriers in their way and achieved goals that last year felt impossible. You will also meet four remarkable young people who have overcome obstacles most of us cannot imagine. They are now pursuing their dreams. I hope you will be as moved as I am by all these individuals and what they've accomplished. Everything you do to support Families First today and every day makes a difference in the lives of Atlanta's children and families. Thank you again to our sponsors, our board, our staff, and you for joining us tonight. Now I'm pleased to introduce the chairman of our board of directors, Dell Early. Dell, take it away. Thank you, DePriest. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to serve as chair of the Families First Board of Directors, particularly as we celebrate Families First 130th year of service to the children and families of the Atlanta community. On behalf of the board, I want to thank the talented and dedicated staff who, under the leadership of CEO DePriest Wadi, have adjusted our resources to respond to an historic pandemic affecting our community. In springing into action at this extraordinary time, they are actually living the family's first legacy laid down by servant leaders who came before them. In fact, this is not the first pandemic that Families First has seen families through. We were already in our 28th year when the Spanish flu of 1918 struck Atlanta. Our families need us to, needed us then and they need us now to provide critical services and bring families hope in a bright future. And speaking of a bright future, I'm here to introduce two extraordinary young women who have made it through a tough journey with the support of Families First. They are both clients of our teenage pregnancy and parenting program that we call TAP. They are new mothers finishing high school, one a class president, and against all odds, they are entering Georgia State University in the fall. Today, we are awarding Devorah Chisholm the Carol Dunlap Riser Scholarship and Desiree Grant the Mary Beth Lemer Scholarship, both in honor of beloved Families First Board Chairs. These scholarships help cover college expenses to pave the way toward the goals of owning their own business, owning a home, giving back to other young women who need a hand up. See for yourself what hard work and success looks like with a little help from Families First when you meet these extraordinary young women. My name is Devor Chisholm. I'm 20 years old and I have a two-year-old. His name is Tyree Boone and three-month-year-old Sabrina Jr. My name is Desiree Grant. I'm 17 years old and my son Carson still be three months. I've been in a TAP program since I first found out when I was pregnant by the beginning of my senior year. Our TAP program is actually a great opportunity for us to provide support to pregnant and parenting teens to help them to succeed and to see it through a different lens. High school, it was rocky. My mom, she was really sick. She had cancer, lupus, seizures really bad. It was just her time to go and she was playing mom and daddy to me and my brother. And 
it was just a disaster. In the beginning, I was not showing that much. And then like one day I was getting out of the shower and then I had to look in the mirror and I felt a baby kick and I was just like, oh my God, what is that? I was happy, but I was scared too. Like I didn't know what I was gonna do because it was my senior year and I wanted to participate in a lot of stuff, which I, I couldn't do. I found I was pregnant two months after my mom passed away. I was so young, I was only 16 years old and I did not know what to do. Like I'm still learning life. I wanted to be like my mom. Like she she would do a lot of things for us. She's so supportive and she pushed me so hard to do everything. I have family, but I really didn't have no support. Most of my family downed me. They was like, oh, you're not gonna become nobody. It actually motivated me, so I have to keep moving forward, not just because I'm having this baby, but my mom wanted more out of me. I just wish I would knew about family first, because I know they would have helped out a lot. But I didn't figure out until years later. When I first met Devorah, I was amazed at how open she was. I always like, I want to give up, and I had suicidal thoughts. We all are going to face trials and tribulations. Resiliency is how we deal with them and how we keep going despite the trials and tribulations. Family first, it uplifts me. I know I wasn't in a position of helping others, but I always want to help people. And it just changed a lot. Seeing Michelle, she do any and everything for these young women. When I first joined the TAP program, it's like I can talk to Miss Michelle and I can talk to the other teen moms and they understand me more than my mom probably does. It's really supportive. Desiree actually was in our adoptive family program and first meeting with Desiree was actually reaching out to her to make sure that I got her items delivered to her and her family. Families first brought me the rocking chair, six boxes of Pampers, stuffed bear toys and everything. They bought my mom a crock pot. I didn't know they was gonna support the whole family. And I was really, you know, I was grateful for that because I never had anything like that. When we think about the baby, it's not just mom and baby, but actually who's gonna be there to help support the baby. So we know that the better off that everyone is doing, the better off baby's going to do. I call Michelle and be like, Miss Michelle, I need you to get Carson while I do this or whatever. And she'll be there for me. Anybody will be there for me. I can talk to them about anything. It's amazing because I never knew all this stuff. Like it teach me being a better mom to both of my kids. We actually are going in and we're giving them opportunities to learn about how to parent their babies, learning about how they become advocates for themselves. I joined a dance team in Mahogany Sip. I also joined DECA. It's an organization where they help you with finance and marketing. And I also won an SGA president this year. I have straight A's. I actually want to run my own business, so I'm going to go to Clayton State University and I'm going to major in marketing. Desiree is very motivated and determined. I have no doubt that Desiree is going to be successful. I'm going to Georgia State and I'm studying um, business administrative. I have to become a successful woman for my kids. Devorah works very hard to make sure that her family is well taken care of. Devorah has given away a um, pack and play to another mom in the program because that mom was without. So Devorah has a tiny package with a huge heart. You just have a mindset that you can do it. Success is an attitude. It requires maximum effort. You have to push yourself to do things that you've never done before. The Dining for a Different Scholarship is really important because for our moms that want to have the secondary education, go off to college or university, that provides more support to them to be able to do so. And we know that them finishing their education will then put the whole family in a better situation. Thank you for the money. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for helping me get in college. Like, this is really a big step, like, helping me go to college. I didn't know what I was going to do to get the money. Thank you to the wonderful people that donate. I'm just so grateful that I just experienced this whole thing. I wish I could meet every last one of these people, but I'd rather than stay home than catching this type of virus. <laughs> Thank you, Desiree and Devora, and congratulations on your success. They are sheltering in place with their children tonight and want to express their gratitude for the scholarship awards. Now, we can't wait to see where the future takes them. Families First is so proud to be with these young women on this journey.
Remember, you have only 25 minutes to bid on some unforgettable silent auction items, including that week in San Diego or Scottsdale at the Four Seasons, valued at over $8,000. And don't forget to click below and visit the auction if you haven't already. And speaking of unforgettable, I can't wait for you to meet Ebony Williams and her four children. Ebony grew up just around the corner from here, from where I stand tonight, at the family's first headquarters on Atlanta's west side. Her excellence in the classroom led her to be asked to attend the School of Law and Government at Farrell High School, where she graduated with honors and went on to college. Now, soon after, Ebony found herself pregnant and raising a family on her own. Ebony had no idea what was to come next. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Ebony Williams. My name is Ebony Williams. I have four beautiful children, a set of twins. They're 19. I have a son that's 14 and a son that's 10. It all started when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I had a mental breakdown and wasn't able to work, so I lost my job, and I couldn't afford rent, so I lost my place to stay. And it kind of let me and my children basically being homeless. Being homeless, you slowly start rolling down the hill of feeling hopeless. My mom had us at the age of 19 in high school. She graduated salutatorian. Ever since then, my mother's just been on the road to success, and then I feel like the bipolarism was like the unexpected downfall in her life. I couldn't take care of my kids or myself, and they left a lot of responsibility on my kids to take care of me. It was kind of hard on me a little bit because I had to help her take her medicine, and it was just kind of a bit of... Can you stop? It, kind of, it gets emotional sometimes. I really couldn't do both, focus on school and maintain my mother's mental illness because I had to make sure she took showers, ate, basically kind of take care of my mother. You have low self-esteem and you just feel mostly like a failure, like you failed your children. With no income, her and her family became homeless. Um, they were homeless for over a year. Being homeless was a big challenge for them. Not being able to have a place of their own, it kind of made them feel lost. I had struggled with colleague getting involved in games. We had to go to a shelter because my mother wasn't doing too well. All my kids' grades dropped. They were struggling in school. It was kind of a struggle for me just to go to school and not have to go through a shelter. I also had this mentality that whatever I go through is going to be OK. Resiliency means um, being able to get up and dust yourself off and keep moving forward. Being able to be resilient sometimes calls for a support system, and that's what Shelter Family is. When I got with Shelter Family, it was just epic. She came in the door with all this hope and all of this energy, and I saw something in that family. It was just unique. Those are my ladies. They, they opened up so many doors for me. They allowed me to have a home. They allowed me to have my own independency and, and a house when Ebony came in, Ebony was just so grateful to have stable housing, and she wanted to get back where she was. Ms. Monique, she helps me through crisis. We set short-term and long-term goals. Four months, she was on a career path that she obtained it. And all along, she was still working with her children. Her kids are amazing. Even through the struggle, she has two that are in college. Oh, they showed out. <laughs> they showed out. The grades drastically changed. The twins got a GPA of 3.0 and better. Carlos, my 10-year-old, he's currently gifted. He's a straight-A student. Colleague channeled that energy into sport. He strayed away from games. He was able to become an athlete. Colleague also does so good in his school that he was the first eighth grader that I know to receive a college scholarship in middle school. You can't work on your mental illness. You're stuck in a homeless situation. For children, you can't be successful in school not knowing where you're going to lay your head each and every night. Through Shelter Our Family, they offer also so many other programs, therapy, how to maintain and keep a home from cleaning to budget and finance, parenting. I feel empowered. And my kids let me know that. And it allows me to be a better parent for them. Without families first, I would have been kind of lost, still contemplating on 
what to do in life. Right now, I would probably be wanting to throw a fit and go run away or something like that. The road that I was going down, I think I'd most likely be dead. With Family First, I'm able to have a lot of strength in me. I'm able to move forward in my life. You have to fight being homeless to come in and get to this point when they can start fighting for their mental health, employment, and stability for their family. That's where the resilience comes in because we keep them on track and we're here for them to, to give them support during that part. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Find those necessary resources that you need and actually accept them and use them. You make a difference in the lives and you are making it better for me and my kids and what you do matters. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to be a better parent and to provide. Your help is so much needed and so appreciated. You are a blessing. Continue to do what you do because it matters. There are more women out there like me. You're helping produce successful people. You're giving life and you're giving hope to people that are hopeless. And I'm thankful. I'm just thankful. Wow, what a powerful story. Ebony, we know that you're watching right now, so we'd like to take a moment to thank you for sharing your story with us and express our sincere gratitude for helping inspire others to change their lives in the same way you have. So thank you. Friends, these success stories wouldn't be possible without your support, which is why we are so grateful to have you here with us tonight. My name is Megan McRoberts, and I'm honored to be here with you this evening for my first virtual fundraiser to celebrate the fantastic work of Families First and hopefully encourage you to join in in our fundraising efforts. We've made it super easy to give tonight. Just send a text to the number 44321, type DFAD2020, that's D-F-A-D 2020, and push send. Follow the prompts in the response text. If you'd like to donate from your laptop or computer, you can simply scroll down on this page right here, click make a donation, but don't worry, you're not going to miss a thing. The pledge form is going to open up in a secondary tab. Remember, if you have any trouble donating tonight, you can also call one of our helplines at 404-853-2810 or 408-373-0942, and someone's going to be standing by. For the next few minutes, we're going to give you the opportunity to hear more about some of our phenomenal programs and to specifically learn more about our Shelter of Family program, where Ms. Williams was able to gain the foundation she needed to reshape the path of her life. Now, I'd like to give you a little insight as to where these dollars could go. With 32 apartments available in our Shelter of Family program, as you can imagine, rent is a significant expense for the organization. A donation of $5,000 could provide rent for three months to one of our families. Many of these clients come to us from long-term homelessness, and their recovery is not possible without a roof over their heads. Your $5,000 donation could help us secure a family for three months and help them on their way to a stable future. So, if you can help us tonight, go ahead and put in that pledge for $5,000. And we have our first donation, Whitley and Willie Ward. Thank you so much for your generous support. We have another donation, Rachel Newsbaum. Thank you. We appreciate you. What a great start already. We have donations coming through the gate. And folks, if you don't hear your name called, it's because I'm going to keep the process going here. But we do have donations flowing through Shakira Brown. We have another. Thank you. All right. Let's keep it going, folks. At the $2,500 level, I want to tell you a little bit about a conversation I had with Sakina Huffman, the program manager for Shelter a Family, who you met in the video. Hey, Sakina, can't wait to meet you. One of the things she told me was that everybody in the program has been diagnosed with a mental or behavioral health disorder. When Ebony first came to Families First, she had been told that she would never work again due to the instability caused by her mental illness. Sakina and her team of caseworkers at Shelter a Family realized that Ebony was simply on the wrong medication and that's what kept her from working. 
Families First was able to provide the wraparound and supportive services to help Ebony get back on track and join the workforce, and nothing has stood in Ebony's way since, which you've seen. Your $2,500 donation could help provide one month of these critical wraparound services for a family and help them get back on the road to stability. Don't forget, you can text the number 44321 with the message DFAD2020. We have donations rolling in and we appreciate your support. All right, I'm gonna take a pause and give you a friendly reminder that the silent auction is getting ready to close in less than 10 minutes. So make sure you're watching those bids and keeping your, your activity up because we're trying to raise some money tonight to support Families First. Don't miss your chance to bid on some of the fantastic trips that you saw, such as the Four Seasons Resort in Scottsdale or in California. Simply scroll down and click on the Browse and Bid in the silent auction button below. All right, let's jump back in. For many of you, you probably think of Families First as a counseling service. That's really where it all began. Counseling is at the heart of everything that we do at Families First, and it's critical to our success. This counseling can take many different forms, whether it's individual group counseling or family counseling. We are addressing the emotional challenges that these families have been through from abuse to bullying to very intense trauma from being on the streets. This work is critical to their success and we need your support to help provide these services. $1,000 can provide a month of necessary individual and family counseling services for one family. And the dollars are starting to come in. I see another of Ken Neighbors. I see Elijah Hopkins. Thank you for your $1,000 donation. All right, many of our residents in our program face moderate to severe substance abuse challenges. Now, not only does addiction impact their health, it also prohibits them from getting a job, creating a stable home for their children, and from eventually pulling themselves out of poverty. Your $500 donation can help offset the cost of one month of substance abuse counseling for a shelter a family resident. Can you pledge your support? We do. We have an anonymous donation at the $500 level. Margaret Reiser, I see you at the $500 level. Thank you so much. Amir Thompson, we have another at the $500 level. And so some donations are still rolling in here, folks. So this is incredible. You are so being so supportive. We appreciate it and keep going. There's no need to stop now. At the $250 level, your dollars could provide a basic move-in kit for new families who come into the program. This includes all the things you would need to get started in a new apartment, such as cleaning supplies, toiletries, bedding, and basic staples to start a new life. Can you text DFAD2020 at the $250 level to number 44321 and help us with, your, with our cause? We have some more donations coming through. We have Raj Shudapur, thank you. We have Anthony D. Achille, looks like we have another. I see some more coming in here at different levels. That's fantastic, thank you so much. All right, let's move on to our last level here tonight, folks, but it doesn't have to be. At the $100 level, your support is going to make massive change in this Shelter Family program. One of the things that we've realized at Families First is that when a family is making their way out of homelessness, building trust in our staff can take time. Your gift of $100 could help us hire a peer advocate, someone who's walked the path of homelessness before and can relate to the real life challenges that these families are facing. Your donation of $100 will pay for a day of peer advocacy to support our residents and the donations are starting to come in. We have another anonymous donor. We have a Nicole Andreas coming through at the $100 level. We see you, thank you. We've got some other donations flowing through at various levels and that's okay, folks. We know that maybe one of these levels isn't perfect for you, so you choose what fits right now and you show your support. Every dollar counts, every dollar makes a difference. You can be a hero tonight by being a part of our first virtual fundraiser. And like you heard earlier, we were around 
in the pandemic back in the early 1900s. And just think, 100 years from now, we might be shouting your name in praise for your support tonight. So let's keep it going. Keep the spirits up. We've got another Megan Rogers coming in. Thank you very much. All right, so while those donations keep coming through, I'd like to introduce you to our next two scholarship recipients. You've actually already met them, but tonight you're about to find out that there's much more to their story. We are so excited to celebrate Ebony's 19-year-old twins, Ariel and Jarrell Williams. You've seen where they've came from, where they've come from, and now we invite you to take a look at what's next for Ariel and Jarrell. My name is Ariel Williams, and I'm 19 years old. I attend Georgia State, and I have a twin brother, and his name is Jarrell. The journey of being homeless and becoming a freshman at GSU, it wasn't something an average teenager would deal with on a daily basis. The perception of being homeless can come in many forms. When you hear homeless, you just hear poor or low class, but once you're in that situation, then you kind of get a different perspective. It's taught me humbleness and patience. It's taught me when to speak and not to speak and how to say things as opposed to coming off aggressive. It made me become a better person I am today because I'm able to be a leader and I'm able to show my siblings that no matter what obstacles we go through, we'll always get through them. Some of the challenges that a mother bipolarism gave me were not being able to focus on school. And it was kind of hard on me because she was so much in the hospital. You know, I had to make sure my brothers get in the bed and go to school on time. Well, I've always been that big type of sister. If I have any money from school or anything, I'll always take my last spending money and spend on my brothers to make sure they eat and not hungry or anything. Family is first. Give us that boost and to nurture my mother to uh, building back that process of maintaining the household and taking care of her kids. Once we got in the house, I felt like it was a better opportunity for us to be even more open with each other. As opposed to me focusing on my mother's mental illness, I was more focused on school, studying for tests. It was kind of tough for me, but going to school every day always kept a smile on my face. Being accepted to college was a wonderful thing for me. I actually love it at Georgia State. That's one of the biggest things I ever accomplished. But I didn't know that I was going to be accepted because of the things that I went through during my life around that time. Georgia State is nice. I feel like it's being a big responsibility. I aspire to be a criminal defense lawyer and an interview to own my own law firm. Right now I'm taking nursing classes. I wanted to be an obstetrician. I actually wanted, always wanted to deliver babies. The Family First scholarship was overwhelming. I plan on using it towards my tuition as well as extracurricular activities that I have. I felt like this scholarship would have helped me with my goals in life. That's one thing big on me. I will always go back and help the community or help other people. Now I have opened up and I'm able to share my story because I want other people to know that no matter what you go through, you always get through whatever you've been through. If you have a goal in life and you really do want to accomplish it, you got to put forth the effort and the uh, hard work behind it. And I feel like regardless of what you deal with on a daily day basis, you can't let that pull you down. I thank Family First for this opportunity and I thank them for this scholarship. I think for everything for helping me out and to becoming the better person I am right now. What powerful young people they are. I love this family. And folks, while we were watching that video, we've had several more donations came in. We had Erica and John Montag come in at the $1,000 level. We have Patty and Doug Reed who came in at the $1,000 level. We've got uh, Robin Sims who came in at $1,000. Vicki Morrow who came in at $250. Ronald, William, we see you. Thank you so much for your support. Dorothy Hopkins, we've got another. Let's keep it going, my friend. Um, this is an incredible showing and again an unprecedented very modern approach to a traditional gala and we are so grateful for you being here this evening to continue to support families first no pandemic is going to stop our work now we have a special little treat for you from ebony and her family expressing their gratitude of your of their support and of your support tonight take it away williams family on behalf of me and my brother Jerome, we would like to say thank you to first once again. Thank you for being able to provide us for this scholarship. We'll be able to use this scholarship for extracurricular activities. Thank you for providing for our family. We couldn't have done it without you all. I would like to say thank you for me first, really, because without you, we wouldn't even be able to accomplish all these goals. 
Thank you very much. You helped us in our time and we've come a long way and we appreciate all the help that you have offered. Hi everybody. Just wanted to say thank you again because what you do, it really matters. Williams family, we love you. Thank you so much for sharing your gratitude and we appreciate you for showing up every day and continue to work the program. So thank you every single one of you for your generous support tonight, whether you're tuning in right now or been watching us the whole time, keep in mind that the donations don't have to stop. You can continue to support us by sending a text to number 44321 and just simply type DFAD2020 in the body of the text and you'll receive a prompt of the next steps. If you'd rather donate right now, right here, you can scroll down right here on this page, click make a donation, and it's going to open up a secondary tab to let you make your pledge. Lastly, if you'd rather donate in another way by sending a check or another means, feel free to call one of our hotlines at 404-853-2810 or 408-378-0942. So thank you for your endless support. And now it is time to close the silent auction. That's right, my friends. Go ahead and place those final bids because I'm about to count it down. Who's going to be our winners tonight? Show your support. Place those final bids. We're about to do the countdown in five, four, three, two, one, and closed. Big congratulations to all of our winning bidders this evening. Thank you again for your support. You'll receive a text message with next steps to secure your item. Folks, thank you for letting me be here with you tonight in your living rooms and for helping me complete my first virtual fundraiser. My name is Megan McRoberts. I'm the president and founder of Auction Eventworks, and it's been a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you tonight. Now I'd like to invite Monica Kaufman Pearson back to the stage for a very special presentation. Will you join me, Monica? Thank you very much, Megan. You did a great job. Thank you. You know how to get that money, girl. <laughs> and thanks to all of you who have given so generously tonight. You really did a good job. 2020 marks the 130th year of service to families and children by Families First and its predecessor agencies. Now, these 130 years form an unbroken chain. Links have been added to the chain as the area served has expanded. The chain has been strengthened through mergers and through a growing depth of response to community needs. Five agencies, four mergers, and 13 name changes have all been a part of the process of becoming Families First. Constant through our history has been our focus on providing comprehensive prevention and treatment services such as counseling, specialized foster care support, adoption services, pregnancy support, and parenting services. Also constant has been our good fortune to benefit from the generosity of thousands of volunteers. Volunteers who have been and remain critical to our ability to be there for families who need us. Tonight, we are proud to start a new chapter in the family's first history with the awarding of the first ever Montag Family Volunteerism Award to Tony and Jackie Montag. You know, volunteerism is truly a part of your DNA if you are a Montag. And, and at Families First, we have been the beneficiaries of the Montag family commitment to service for over 70 years. Beginning in the 1930s, Jane and Louis Montag began their work with the organization, both to serve the community and to work alongside many dear friends. Now, as a young bride in the 1930s, Tony's mother, Jane, started the family legacy of volunteerism with the organization then known as the Child Welfare Association. Her first volunteer assignment helping bathe babies who had been orphaned. From volunteer to chair of the board's medical association, then to president of the board, and finally honorary director, Jane Montag set forth a legacy of volunteerism and service to families that has spanned generations. Tony and Jackie have continued the tradition of service started by Jane. 
Joining the board in the late 1990s, Tony Montag was relied upon by then CEO Burt Weaver for his expertise in investments to help families first grow and strengthen. Tony went on to serve as the chairman of the board of directors. More recently, Families First has benefited from the leadership of the third generation of Montags. John Montag served on the board of directors and as board president. And today, Erica Montag is a valued board member and chairperson of the Advancement Committee. John shared a moment before he joined the board that has stayed with him for years. He said, Dad invited me to attend a board meeting, one that ended promptly at 1.30 p.m. as scheduled. We did not leave for another few minutes, and while departing, he suggested looking back into the room. It remained full. Nobody else had left. His point? An organization works best when people want to spend time together. This spirit of service, of community, and coming together with people is embodied by the Montag family. So please, wherever you are, join me in toasting, and if you have a glass, raise it, and let's cheer Tony and Jackie Montag, recipients of the inaugural Montag Volunteerism Award. Isn't this gorgeous? We are all better for knowing you and value and appreciate everything you have done for 70 years and counting for families and children across the state of Georgia. And we cannot wait to present this award to you in person. Bravo! Cheers! And with that, tonight's Dining for a Difference at Home is coming to an end. But before we say goodnight, we have to say thank you also again. Thank you tonight for your support. And we are happy to announce that the amount raised so far tonight, $400,000, yes! And more still coming in. You can still donate. From all of us here at Families First, we say thank you for making a difference and good night. See you next year.